Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So welcome to UUCM. We've got a we've got a service with a lot of moving parts this morning, literally. In fact, you guys are going to be moving along with us. But uh, to keep the distractions down to a minimum, I'm going to ask you to please silence your cell phones so we don't have those buzzing when we're deep into our thing. So thank you so much. Good morning. By placing this basket of black oak acorns on our altar each week, we acknowledge the Nisanan people are still here among us today, though nearly invisible after generations of erasure and exclusion from California's history. We understand that we are on Nisanan land that was never ceded seated meaning never given up and the original tribal families have yet to recover from the genocide of their people we commit ourselves to supporting the nisanan in their efforts to stabilize their people and restore tribal sovereignty Okay, we invite you to stand in body or spirit. We're going to sing hymn number 1007, There's a River Flowing in My Soul.
Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist community of the mountains. I extend a warm welcome to you if you've been here many, many years or if you're here for the first time. And I extend a warm welcome to those of you that are with us this morning on Zoom and those of you that are here in this room. My name is Carol Nimick and Randy McKean and I are glad to be your worship associates this morning, assisted by Beth Carew and Gracie McKenzie. This is the final Sunday of January, whose monthly theme has been centering. Today, we will continue to explore this theme in further ways. Often heard wisdom says centering is found only when we're quiet. However, perhaps our centers can be experienced through motion and movement and sound as well. We want to look at centering in experiential ways, asking, how do I access a feeling of centeredness? Where is my center and how do I find it? I also ask, why is centering important to me? Why do I want to be centered? My experience is that when I'm centered, my life feels heightened and more aware and more full. It's a form of nourishment for our hearts and souls. We will explore our theme through music, dance, movement, breath. Listen closely to the music. Watch Dahlia's dance. Breathe with Gracie. We hope these experiences will enliven your awareness about centering and give insight how we might return to this place in ourselves. Welcome and thank you for coming. I'd like to invite Dahlia Murray to come and be with us.
Faith by Monica Jacobson Tennyson. What is it that calls you here, that calls you onward, that calls you inward, that leads you homeward? What is it that gives you the power to make that change, to ask that question, to take that journey? What is it that says you have done well, that asks you to learn more, that brings you to stillness, that holds you up in hard times? It is relationship, the beating heart of our faith. It begins when we share this hour, our truths, this air, our hearts. Come, let us worship together. As we light our chalice here, I invite those of you at home to light your home chalice. And I'd like to invite Dahlia again to be with us. All right. So thinking on centering, so many words and concepts. Maybe you think of it as balancing, grounding, anchoring, somehow finding your center. What about just noticing? I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Just get comfortable in your body. With your hands resting comfortably. Just notice how your clothes feel resting on your skin, where it's draping, where the clothes might be pressing against you. Notice your feet resting inside your shoes. Notice the earth pressing up against the bottoms of your feet. Notice the chair pressing up against the bottom of your spine, the backs of your legs, pressing your spine upward where your shoulders rest, where your head rests. Notice the temperature of the room. Even the air presses against your face. Notice the air as it rushes in into your lungs and effortlessly exits. Gently opening your eyes, coming back to the room. Let's experience noticing our bodies in movement together with experimentation, with a little music with me. You can just follow along with me. With your palms up. Inhale. Hold your breath. towards you. Press, inhale. And grab that space, pull it towards you. 
that again. Press, inhale. Grab it. Nice. Take your right hand gently for those of you feeling the space above. Left hand just pressing down to the earth gently. And release. Other side. Press. And press down. Beautiful. Let those hands meet in the center. Turn them on their side. Fall to the side. That figure eight laying down. Nice. Just the left hand. Just the left hand. One more time. A little quicker. Beautiful. Let's try two hands open slowly. And they cross wrists. Open. Feel that cross. One more. Let's gather. Inhale. Hold. Make this breath long. Inhale. center, crossing those wrists. Inhale. Thanks. Now we invite our children to head back to classes, uh, and we will sing them on their way. your spirit this morning. I'll give you a second to check in with that. Okay, yeah, but how about now? <laughs> what about an hour from now? What do you think? Tomorrow? What about yesterday? Yesterday morning? Afternoon? Evening? Day before yesterday? Or last Tuesday? <laughs> Throughout the last week, we've all had the opportunity to feel a variety of ways. And checking in with ourselves sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Maybe you've received great news or horrible news. Maybe you've been inundated with requests for your time. Or maybe you've been profoundly bored, overpeopled, or perhaps a little or a lot lonely. Maybe all of this and more or something else. Maybe the strongest pull on your spirit is actually someone else, someone you're thinking about, even worried about, someone whose situation is concerning to you. 
it may be someone dear to your heart or someone you've never met. Knowing that we are all holding each other and caring for each other, no matter if we know the details of what we're going through or not, is one of the strongest ways we live in community with each other. And each week we have the opportunity to ritually add what we carry individually to a collective container of community where our joys are amplified and our sorrows are easier to bear in the loving, caring, supportive presence of each other. During the musical offering, some in the room may choose to come forward to pick up a stone, symbolic of all that we are carrying, and place it into this bowl of water to join with and be held by others in the strength and safety of community. Those on Zoom may wish to briefly type into the chat. And regardless of where your body takes you during these moments, please allow your heart and your mind to continue to hold a sacred space for yourselves and for others. Before we start though, Let's take a few deep breaths as we deepen into this time of silent reflection together.
I place the last stones for all, all that remains, weighing on our hearts, perhaps too tender to surface at this time in this way. Our candles today were lit in recognition of the two mass shootings in California last week, as well as two of the most recent black men murdered by police, Keenan Darnell Anderson and Tyree Nichols. May all their names be spoken, their lives be honored and remembered. There's a lot to hold. There's been a lot to hold and there will be a lot to hold. And throughout the holding and hopefully the all important releasing, may you find comfort, may we find comfort knowing that we are held in this loving community and that you in turn hold others. Blessed be. So now we have an opportunity to meditate together. This is one that some of us have done before. It's a meditation that's called the breath of joy and it combines movement with breath. Um, we're also going to add this morning a mantra. It's a mantra that I've been working with a lot lately in the past couple of years. And the mantra is very simply, I am here now in this. I am here now in this. So it's one breath per movement, one word per movement. And this is how it goes. So I invite you to come to just the edge of your seat and feel your feet on the floor because we're going to bring our hands behind our back. If that's too much on your shoulders, just do the best. Just go to the edge that feels comfortable for you. So let's just take a moment just to close your eyes and just to feel into this moment, the here and the now. When you're ready, you can just open your eyes. Inhale, hands in front of the heart, I. On the exhale, round through the spine, chin to chest, and. Inhale, here, and exhale, now. You can interlace the fingers if that works. And then in, opening your heart, and this. Hands back out in front, round through the spine. And we'll repeat that. I am here now in this last one. I am here now in this and hands back in front of the heart. Thank you. Like pendulums we swing by Don W. Vaughn Forster. Like pendulums, we swing from hunger to hunger, from hunger for the one great truth, absolute, eternal, mystical, to hunger for simple, near in, familiar truths that change as we change, grow as we grow. Like pendulums, we swing from hunger for cosmic imperatives, commanding us to expand ourselves, to hunger for immediate and authentic inner promptings urging us to be ourselves. We would be right with heaven, so we swing outward. We would fulfill our own heart, so we swing inward. We would grasp the holy and we would create ourselves. We have this dual hunger to serve the cosmos that commands us to become more than we would 
and to be our genuine selves, content with what we are. So we ride this pendulum in hunger for life. We ride from truth that calls us out to truths that call us in. And all because the gravity of life pulls across our hunger, never allowing us to stay on one side or the other, always moving us into new urgency for the wholeness that would bind both the cosmic and the personal. And so life pulls us and we swing from truth to truths, from cosmos to self, from mystery to clarity, from out to in. It is our state to swing and to be drawn ever into another swing. This is the motion that makes ours a human life. May the great gravity of life, which pulls along an unknown holy axis, never let the pendulums we are cease swinging until the truth we seek and the truths we are, are one. And I'm going to invite Tumble back up, Robert Hyrant and Sean Kerrigan, and we have a sing-along for you all. Okay, so we are going to sing and play together a traditional song that comes from Zimbabwe. And the song is called Shumba. Can you all say that? Shumba. And that means the lion. And a lot of the songs, there, there are several different songs that I know, traditional songs from Zimbabwe that have animal you know, they have animal titles and animal qualities. So this song is all about the lion, Shumba. And um, it's, it's a song that comes from uh, the tradition of this instrument, which is called an mbira. And the Shona people from Zimbabwe have been playing these for uh, a, real, a really long time. It's an ancient music. And so we're going to start off with singing. Turn on my sound here. Um, and this song, I think there's a slide that goes with this. Uh, maybe we should bring that up. This song has some simple syllables that we'll sing. Um, and I'll, we'll get started singing. And then Sean and Randy and I will start playing. So the, the words are just simple syllables. Woye, ande. Woye, woye, hey, ande. That's it, great. So here we go, let's see. Here we go, I'll just start off. Woe ye and day. Woe ye, ye, and day. ye and day. Woe ye, and day. ye and day. Yeah. 
That was so fun. <laughs>
bringing the two ends one on top of the other. Now, with one hand, turn just one end 180 degrees. And use your piece of tape, excuse me, use your piece of tape to secure it. So I'm going to do it one more time. I have a loop. I take simply one end. I turn it 180 degrees and tape it. Thanks, Randy. And if you need help, maybe you ask a neighbor or Gracie can come around or... And in fact, you may want to turn it more than 180 degrees and you can make a double Mobius or triple Mobius. And now that you have it, I invite you to take your finger and run it along the white and notice where it goes. Going along the silver and back up to the white. If you're zooming, I invite you to cut a strip of paper <laughs> and make your own Mobius strip. There's no separation. The inner experiences are directed outward and outer experiences inward as in life. Is there a center to a Mobius strip as there was with the Lemnus gate? It seems that the Mobius strip is without a center, but perhaps this continuous edge that goes along it is in fact the center. I suggest our center is within, staying witness to the moment instead of letting the moment take us over is just like running our finger along the Mobius strip edge. And through and by doing this, we can reach our still points. We might realize activity can be positive towards being centered and learn even to gather energy from whatever is happening in our lives. The act of coming and attending this Sunday service is also an experience of centering. Our act of being together as a community is an opportunity for centering. May we in our time ahead be mindful of our centers within ourselves and together within this space and let them be <clears throat> the center of our being May we feel our center in our movement of body and breath. May the flow, smooth movement of the Mobius strip from inner to outer remind us of enlivening our center and how it is available to us each moment. This month, our theme has been finding our center. I've lived in Grass Valley for now for 21 years, longer than I have lived in any one place previously in my 58 years of living. Though I've been settled in this place for all that time, like many of you, life continues to keep me in motion, causing me to travel near and far to play music, to visit family, or vacationing to see the world. During all this perpetual to and fro, one of the things that has remained constant for me during the past 20 years has been UUCM. This community has nurtured me and inspired me. The activism and participation of its members in the greater Nevada County community has in turn drawn me out and connected me to the place in which I live. No matter what is going on in my life inside or outside of these walls, UUCM is there helping me to realize my center is with me wherever I go. Now is the time in our service when we can help nurture this community and its work with our donations. 25% of our offering this uh, of our offering is donated to a local nonprofit that shares our values. 
That nonprofit this month is Sierra Roots, which serves chronically homeless individuals by building personal relationships and providing immediate needs of nutritious hot meals, clothing, and shelter, especially during the severe weather events in the communities of Nevada City and Grass Valley. If you would like to have your whole contribution go to Sierra Roots, please put your donation in the white envelopes that are gonna be coming around. Your giving is vital to, to our ability to sustain the work of our community. Thank you for your generosity, and here are other ways to give. Your generosity remains essential to our ability to sustain the work of our community. There are several ways to contribute. You may text an amount to 833-579-0483, give via our website at uugrassvalley.org, via PayPal at paypal.me slash uucm, or mail to uucm 246 South Church Street, Grass Valley, California, 95945. Thank you. Thank you so much for your donations and contributing to the work of Sierra Roots and this congregation. And that was that was my dedication. So I'd like to say, I'd like to thank thank everyone that participated today. Of course, Carol Mimic. I won't thank myself, but I want to thank Beth Caro and Gracie Kendrick for uh, reading today and doing multiple things today to help us out. Thanks so much. I wanted to thank Robert Hyrant, Sean Kerrigan, Toby Thomas Rose for music. Um, I want to thank Paul Elias and Andy Dooley Miller and of course Bob Miller in the back helping with the audio visual today. There were so many things going on. What a great job. Um, uh, uh, George Dunstan, thank you for uh, your work behind the crew, behind the scenes. I want to thank Dahlia for her amazing dancing and moving meditations with us. It's so wonderful. 
Um, also, uh, Linda Siska, I want to thank you for the beautiful setting that we had today. Um, Jean Gilligan, Connie Wright, Carmen Riley, thank you for helping with greeting and uh, the offering refreshments. We've got Beth Rose and Lori Bell in the back setting that up. So those are gonna be after the service in the back. We can all uh, unwind and get to know each other a little bit. Maybe it's just me that needs to unwind, I don't know. <laughs> and then I wanna thank Joe Waters and Shannon uh, uh, Dooley Miller uh, for the Kids Connection. And I wanna thank Eileen Hale for being our chat host today, Hi. as always. The voice of Eileen always assures us when we hear her Sunday morning when we're doing our run through. Thank you, Eileen. And then I want to thank the UUCM staff, our sabbatical minister, Reverend Janet Ani, our office manager, Carol Fulkerson, who helps assemble these amazing slides. Uh, Mary Lindsay, our communications coordinator, who helps put them together and keeps this place running. Toby Thomas Rose, our music director, and our tech support, Siobhan Boylan, who helped us figure out what order we were supposed to do these multiple things. I I think we figured it out. So we got a few announcements. Circle Supper signups. There's a sign up in the lobby today. I think it's off to the your left when you, you head out there. Uh, we've got postcard packets for um, uh, uh, Virginia special election. Those are available in the foyer. And Nevada County, there's a Nevada County Home Path presentation today at noon. And that's going to be here. And we've got uh, it's Kathleen Doolittle is here. And she's going to be, it's going to be here. And you can also join us on Zoom. Um, and that's going to happen at noon. And so you can learn about all this stuff, our Sunday services, upcoming events, and more at uugrassvalley.org. And um, OK, so we're going to uh, end with it. one more song. And we're even going to ask you to even move a little bit one more time. So uh, we're going to bring up a, Tis a Gift to be Simple. It's got a slightly different melody than I was used to. You want to explain what we're going to have you do? Please stand in body and spirit if you're able to. <clears throat> As we sing, the first verse will move to the left. You can take a step or simply with your arms in your hands. The second line will go to the right. The third line will turn our bodies in front of our chairs one direction. And for the fourth line, we'll turn in the reverse direction, hoping you come back to your centers. <laughs> Closing words for today come from Steve Grump. That which is worthy of doing. That which is worthy of doing, create with your hands. That which is worthy of repeating, speak with a clear voice. That which is worthy, worthy of remembering, hold in your hearts and that which is worthy of living go 
and live it now. I invite you to join the community benediction together with me. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again.